the 80s, such a different world from the one we are experiencing today. Bold hairstyles, fantastic music, cool dance moves, the world in the verge of a nuclear meltdown. Not so different after all. Imagine a world without the technology we are now relying on to function as a society. No cellular phones, computers, internet. In those days, TV was the queen of the entertainment. And I, myself, was always looking forward to watch sci-fi and action movies and series. I still remember waiting patiently for the time to watch one of my favorite series, MacGyver. For those who don't know, MacGyver was a resourceful man who, with a Swiss army knife, a piece of chewing gum, was able to get himself out of the most sticky situations. For me, he was not the regular superhero, but the ultimate engineer with extraordinary problem-solving skills, out-of-the-box thinking and the ability to repurpose and upcycle stuff that is lying around him. And looking back, I believe that my interest in pursuing training in the field of engineering was largely due to this image that was kept in my memory up to the present. When I went to university almost three decades ago, I realized that most of what was believed to be engineering education involved learning physics and its inseparable language, mathematics. This idea remains to this day. This is not to say that this methodology is wrong, only that there seems to be no life beyond this. No room for ingenuity, imagination and artistic creation. For this reason, we at the Polytechnic Institute of Braganza are promoting the teaching of mechatronics, highlighting not only the technical competences, but also the ability to formulate solutions and create over a blank canvas just like MacGyver does with random stuff around him. In particular, students are led to use their imagination and adaptation to unforeseen conditions by engaging in a competition. The context is the following. A mine collapse has occurred, and there are some workers trapped inside. Accepted workers can be done through a small and tight tunnel. Each group of two students must devise a vehicle capable of traveling through this tunnel and reach the workers. To emulate the path the student's vehicle must travel, a tunnel made of PVC pipe was made available. The PVC pipes have an external diameter equal to 110 mm and is comprised of a total of 5 segments. During the first 15 cm, the robot must move horizontally. At the end of this first segment, the path becomes inclined at a 45 degrees angle. Then a new 45 degrees ramp takes place which will require the vehicle to travel at a total absolute angle of 90 degrees. This 20 cm path will then be followed by a curve made by the connection of two 90 degrees PVC bands. The last section is upright and has a length of 30 cm. The end of the path is identified by a permanent magnet placed 5 cm from the end of the final PVC section. Moreover, some of the PVC tubes have longitudinal grooves of about 1 cm in width. The competition will have the following rules. The robotic vehicle must be able to travel along the path defined by the set of tubes and must stop before falling down. The vehicle must be made using recycled materials from heaters, hair dryers, toys, etc. Off-the-shelf kits are not allowed and structural components should be made using wood, metal or any other type of material. It will be possible to 3D print some of the vehicle's components in the case of high-complexity parts. The shape, dimensions, locomotions and degree of autonomy, among other features, should be defined by each group. So here are some examples of ingenuity of our students. Vehicles made of sponge, printer parts, spoons. At the present, with all the things within the reach of a mouse click, it's easy to rely on third party and off the shelf solutions. Even if there is nothing wrong with that when running a business, it is something that we believe biases the student's learning process. Imagination, creativity and ingenuity are fundamental to problem solving in the real engineering world and must be actively promoted. We have tackled this situation by putting our students in a MacGyver position where a solution for a problem must be found by means of repurposing everyday life objects. And that's all folks, thank you for watching this presentation and don't forget 
that imagination is our stronger muscle.